from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. With images of Charlottesville still fresh on our minds, people here in the Valley have reason to wonder if that could happen here. Self-described pro-white activist Peter Teft, who lives in Fargo, is talking about bringing a rally of white supremacists and neo-Nazis to the Valley. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker has the city's response to the possibility. Mike, right now it's just a proposal. I've talked to Fargo Mayor Tim Mahoney and he says so far no permit requests for a rally have been filed with the city, but they're being proactive about the situation regardless. After the violence we saw in Charlottesville, Virginia, when neo-Nazis and white supremacists clashed with counter-protesters last Saturday, Mayor Mahoney says public safety is the city's top priority if a rally like the one in Virginia tries to come to Fargo. We do not uh, intend to sanction this in any way. We will work together to try to figure out a way to handle it if it does come to fruition. Right now, we think that there is no uh, credible uh, evidence that there is going to be a rally in Fargo. Mayor Mahoney says he's going to be meeting with the police and fire chief on Monday to be sure the city is prepared if some sort of rally does end up happening. Mike? All right, thanks, Cornelius. We'll be checking in with the city to see if a permanent ap permit application for that rally is filed. Now, coming up after the weather, a warning from a woman who thought she was getting help from Amazon only to lose money to a scammer. And the latest on the continuing trouble within the president's administration. Time now for the weather. Robert, looks like tomorrow might be mighty fine. Yeah, and tonight's going to be mighty fine. The showers and storms that we had earlier rapidly dissipated a little while ago, and now we're left with partly cloudy to mostly clear skies. Live look outside on the Coronado.com Valley Sky Cam. Part of the Storm Team Sky Cam Network. Just a few clouds out there. Sunset about a half hour ago. We're going to see some mostly clear skies tonight, and could be some northern lights once again. So take a gander off to the north. A little bit later on, 67 degrees winds light out of the south at around 7 miles per hour. Temperatures elsewhere across the region, a mix of some 60s and some 70s. 70 in Grand Fork, 74 in Devil's Lake, also 74 in Thief River Falls, 63 in the Detroit Lakes, Bemidji, and in the Wadena area. Winds becoming rather light, and they're going to be light overnight tonight, but going to pick up out of the south around 10 to 20 miles per hour tomorrow with some occasional stronger gusts, and that's going to bring in some summer-like heat. The th storms we had earlier, watch how quickly they dissipate. Poof, they're gone. They're out of here. And with hardly any clouds out there, no precipitation to worry about as we head through the overnight hours. Northern Plains, some showers and some thunderstorms continue well off to our south, and some of those have been severe. Even had a uh, tornado reported down in southwestern portions of Minnesota earlier. Another tornado warning in effect for portions of northwest Iowa. That severe thunderstorm watch remains in effect for the next little while and those storms moving away from the area for us as we head through the rest of the night any storms that we had they're gone mostly clear skies tonight in areas that saw some decent amounts of rain as we head towards the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning we could see some locally dense fog develop especially in the lakes country and points off towards the south now as we head through the day tomorrow that fog will quickly burn on off we'll see lots of sunshine southerly breezes kicking on up and temperatures warming into the 80s across the entire region. Just a few light clouds as we head through the latter portion of the day across the far northern valley. As we head through the day tomorrow, again here in Fargo, we start off the day in the 50s, but a quick warm up by lunchtime. We're going to warm it on up into the upper 70s and later on in the day with some breezy and warm conditions. We're going to top out right around 86 degrees. Picture of the day. Thanks to Tiffany for sending this in a colorful sunset in Comstock, Minnesota. Going to use that as the backdrop to our seven day forecast and tomorrow looks like a great day out there. Sunday, some late day thunderstorms and some of that activity may linger into the early morning hours on Monday and some of that cloud cover may hamper eclipse viewing, but we'll continue to fine tune that forecast. After that, weather looks great. Mostly sunny and highs in the low to mid 80s. You'll be able to take a little time off maybe. I'm going to get on out. I'm going to the total eclipse, so I'm getting out of here. Okay. Let us know how it turned out. <laughs> you got it. In other news tonight, people are continuing to buy drugs off the dark web and shipping them to their home in the FM area. One of the latest cases happened when 20-year-old Jesse Erickson was arrested for possession of carfentanil. Court documents tell us that he's been charged again after telling investigators he bought ecstasy off a now shut down dark web marketplace called Alpha Bay. Erickson's mother also called police saying envelopes containing powder addressed to her son showed up in the mail. It was LSD and heroin from Belgium. 
The Postal Service and police are aware of the shipping of drugs through the mail, but they say it would be nearly impossible to inspect every package for narcotics. Fargo police released this surveillance video today showing two young men they say robbed a Casey's at Knife Point. The video taken on Tuesday shows one six-foot-tall male wearing a Beretta jacket and one shorter male wearing an Air Jordan sweatshirt holding a knife. If you have any information on who these people are, you're urged to contact Fargo police using the phone number that right now is at the bottom of your screen. It's Friday night, so it's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say Almir Zurich is wanted for forgery. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information on him. To date, the Valley's Most Wanted program has helped Fargo police make nearly 590 arrests. Many people assume scammers try to reach you by calling you or through the email service. However, a Moorhead woman contacted our whistleblower hotline saying she was scammed by a man when she called a number listed as Amazon support on Google. As Valley News Team's Molly Casey reports, the woman wants to send out a warning so something like this doesn't happen to anyone else. I, I was angry. I was also embarrassed at myself for letting it happen. Nancy Campbell canceled her Amazon Prime account months ago. So when a charge for another month of Prime showed up on her credit card, she called Amazon support, or so she thought. I proceeded to go on to Google to find a customer service number for Amazon Prime and found one and called it. The number seemed legitimate, and so did the man who answered. So Campbell didn't think twice when the man asked to access her computer so he could walk her through the refund process. I saw him in the computer put a $500 charge in to an email address. 30 minutes into the call, the man told Campbell that he would need to call her back on Monday, but he already had access to her PayPal and eBay accounts. So Campbell grew suspicious. After the call, she discovered $500 charges from both PayPal and eBay. And after reaching out to the real Amazon Support Center, she found a third attempted charge of $500 on her Amazon account. We had to change bank accounts, change passwords on everything. Though Campbell was able to prevent further charges, she now wants others to know how easy it is to fall victim to scammers. And because I called them, I didn't think really anything about that. From Moorhead, Molly Casey, Valley News Live. Campbell adds that she was refunded for all of the fraudulent charges on her card. She says the number she called was posted on Google yesterday, but when she searched it today, it came up with a warning. As we mentioned, that story came to us through our whistleblower hotline. If you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call the number on your screen, 701-237-6576. Call that number and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. The majority of teenagers aren't wearing their contact lenses correctly, and it means they're at a high risk for serious infection. 85% of teens admit to having at least one bad habit. That's according to new health data. Habits like sleeping with contacts in, not washing your hands before changing them, not going in for an annual checkup, or wearing them longer than you're supposed to. Everybody has a phone these days and our whole lives are in them and so to just set an alarm uh, when you've put the contact lens in and if it's a two-week disposable or a monthly disposable that it alerts you to change that contact lens out as a reminder. Data also shows a lot of teens leave their contacts in while swimming and showering which is a bad habit. The germs in the water can be carried into your eyes. In Fergus Falls, police there have arrested a man accused of fraud. Ethan Kagukowitz is being held in Ottertail County's jail. Records show he's facing a theft by swindling charge. He's accused of using a fake business uh, trying to sell advertising under the company name EK Tapes in Fergus Falls. There's also an active arrest warrant for him near the Twin Cities for fraud. Speaking of the Twin Cities, Minneapolis has a new police chief. The city council voting unanimously to name Madaria Arandando as its new chief of police in the wake of last month's fatal shooting of an unarmed Australian woman by an officer responding to her 911 call. With the official approval, he becomes the first African-American police chief in Minneapolis's 150-year history. 
A couple in an arranged marriage said, I do again at the Mall of America. 19 years ago, David and Elizabeth Weinlich were practically strangers when they got married. They stood at the altar in the Mall of America and got married after knowing each other for only five minutes. David was diagnosed with stage four cancer and the couple decided to renew their vows. The couple thanks the Angel Foundation and the mall for making their wedding possible and also committing to helping other families. But I was recently diagnosed with stage four cancer and am you know, f facing some very difficult struggles as our family is. The Angel Foundation knew everything that I needed. They knew everything that my family needed and they continued to support and encourage us today and they will throughout the months to come. The Weinlicks have four children, Emily, Charlie, Zoe, and Zed. Still ahead tonight, the latest on the growing list of people leaving the White House.